Hi guys, thanks for tuning in to another video on ForgottenWeapons.com. I'm Ian, I'm here today at the Rock Island Auction House once again, and I'm taking a look at one of the pistols that is coming up for sale in their December of 2015 auction. This kind of looks like just another compact 1911 to the untrained eye. It is in fact a Detonix Early Combat Master. And what that means is that it's pretty much the first of the commercial compact 45s. This is something that really we see all over the place today. You can go buy them from countless different manufacturers. But Detonix is really the first company to actually figure out how to do a very small 1911. That's not quite as easy a, a process as it might sound. Uh, when you, as you cut the barrel down quite a lot, what you end up doing is making some significant changes to the, the, the functioning and the timing of Browning's tilting barrel action. And a lot of these guns have a reputation for not working very well if they aren't properly engineered and properly made. So the story of Detonix actually starts with a guy named Pat Yates. Uh, he lived up in the Pacific Northwest in Washington State. He was an employee of an explosives corporation company and a, a firearms enthusiast. And he started tinkering around with 1911s. He had this notion that he, he bet there was probably a way to make a more compact version of the 1911. And he actually started by buying a couple, apparently to his wife's chagrin, and then proceeding to cut them up and re-weld them together, cutting pieces out of the frame and making them smaller. And he tinkered with this starting in the mid-1960s and, and spent many years on and off playing with the concept, trying to get a version that would work right. This involved uh, not just shortening the frame, but then also redesigning the recoil system and the spring weights and the spring rates to ensure that the gun would actually cycle properly. As you cut the frame down, you lose mass, but you're still firing the same bullet, so the slide velocity goes up. And what you have to do is decelerate the slide quickly enough that it doesn't start battering itself against the back of the frame, but slowly enough that it can make it can travel all the way back to successfully feed a new cartridge. It's, it's a tricky balance to make, and we're talking about very, very small changes having significant impacts on how well the gun works. Anyway, he's tinkering with this for many years, his own, kind of his own personal project. And then around 1973, his company, Explosives Corporation, uh, starts to downsize. And they lay off a bunch of employees, and some of these employees get together and form their own new explosives company, which they call Detonix. Yates is still working for explosives, uh, Excoa is called Explosives Corporation. Um, eventually, he takes a new job actually with the Navy, doing Navy research work, uh, which prompts him to move out of the, out of the area. At the time, some of his buddies who are now working for Detonix, uh, really, they think this, this pistol is a cool idea, and they think that there's a commercial opportunity for it. Yates apparently wasn't so sure, um, but he was quite happy to, he patented the, the concept, uh, his, his take on the design, and then he sold uh, the patent rights to Detonix. He was happy to do that. And then he moved on to doing other things. Well, Detonix took the concept, and they tweaked it a little bit more and got it down uh, to a point where they could actually mass produce them. Now the first Detonix frames were actually made with cut and re-welded Colt pistol frames, but they, they were eventually able to get their own frames manufactured. They had a number of other custom parts, uh, and they were able to successfully start marketing in the, the late 1970s the first commercial subcompact 1911. So why don't I bring the camera back, let's take a closer look at this, uh, we'll disassemble it, and we'll take a look at some of the odd features that it does have. So here is the Detonix up close. Obviously the slide and barrel have been cut down. This uses a three and a half inch barrel. The frame has also been cut down. It uses a shortened magazine. This holds six rounds, plus you could have an additional seventh round in the chamber and the magazine release is still in exactly the same location, so this will take standard sized Colt 1911 magazines. Uh, obviously standard mags will stick out. The magazine, the shortened magazine that comes with it, fits flush. Now, all right, you can see this is marked Detonix 45 Auto, and there is this interesting, unusual little slot in the bottom of the magazine. The problem that they ran into was in order to fit six rounds into this shortened magazine, they actually ran out of space for the follower. So I'll use my precision gunsmithing tool here. 
if we push the follower all the way down like it was fully loaded, this tab from the back of the follower needs some place to go and it has run out of space inside the magazine body. So that little slot in the, the bottom of the magazine is left open to give that tab somewhere to go. One thing that obviously is going to jump out at people is this rather unusual placement of the rear sight, which has been moved forward, something like an inch and a half, and the back of the frame has been scalloped down. Now they cut this down pretty much as far as they could go without actually causing problems with the firing pin and the extractor poking through. And the reason they did that was actually, interestingly, to facilitate cocking the gun on the draw. One safe way to carry this, because remember there's no, well I haven't pointed it out yet, but there is no grip safety. The grip safety on the Detonix has been permanently disabled here. So you have a thumb safety and a hammer safety, or a half cock notch. So should you choose to carry this either at half cock or with the hammer fully down, this scallop in the frame makes it much easier for you to cock the hammer on the draw, um, almost like uh, fanning a revolver. And that's actually why that was made that way. Now you'll also notice that the hammer itself is a somewhat unusual shape. This is very similar to a commander style hammer that's uh, skeletonized, but it's had the bottom half of the hammer removed. This is again to compensate for the small size of the frame. This prevents you from getting hammer bite because even if it comes back and hits your hand, it's not going to pinch your hand against the grip safety like a typical 1911 hammer does. Now there are a few other changes internal to the gun, so why don't I go ahead and disassemble it and I can show you that. So disassembly is just like a standard 1911. I'm going to pull the slide back to the disassembly, Just cut, pull the slide stop out, and then the, the barrel and slide assembly come off. Our frame is, is other than the differences we've already talked about, pretty much standard, nothing real special about that. So this recoil assembly is really kind of the heart of what makes a Detonix work. Uh, there are two recoil springs counterwound in here, a small one inside and a larger one on the outside. There is a captive guide rod that they are on, and then there is this uh, front plug to keep the, the, guide, the spring in the correct position in the front of the slide assembly. This, isn't, you know, this doesn't look like anything all, all that innovative today, but in the, the 1960s and 70s, this was not a typical thing you could ever find in a 1911. Right, now one of the other changes pioneered by Detonix was to get rid of the barrel bushing altogether. So a typical 1911 will have a removable piece up here that holds the, the muzzle in the proper position. Detonix got rid of that and what they did was flare the end of the barrel instead so that it fits directly into the slide. This is, today, this is a, the standard, everyone knows this is how you do a compact 45, is a, you get rid of the barrel bushing and you flare the end of the barrel. Detonix is actually the first company to have done that. They came up with the idea, and uh, that's another critical por portion of how you can get this very, very small 1911 to actually function without changing its, its basic mechanical operation. So those two are the main changes, the recoil spring and the, uh, the flared barrel. Now you can see that this uh, the end of the recoil spring guide here is, has a couple of angled cuts on it that line up with the, uh, the pivot link there to allow everything to sit in proper position. And then of course the slide stop fits just like that when the pistol is assembled and that is what locks the barrel into the frame and thus forces it to pivot uh, when you fire the gun. So there you have reassembled one Detonix. This was called a Combat Master. Uh, within a few years of, of putting this on the market, it was, it was very successful. And uh, Detonix started to release additional models of pistol. Um, they had the Competition Master, they had the Service Master. They, they greatly expanded into the, the full realm of 1911 variants. But this, the, the Super Compact uh, Combat Master was the first of their the first pistol that really turned Detonix, interestingly, from an explosives company into a handgun manufacturer. 
These did get some, uh, some popularity in popular culture. Uh, Don Johnson's character in Miami Vice apparently carried one of these in a, an ankle holster, and that sort of publicity certainly helped to make them popular. Well, thank you for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. It's neat to get to see the, the history behind some of the pistols that we just kind of take for granted today, and the Detonics is certainly one of those. Uh, very cool name going back a fair ways in this sort of pistol market. If you'd like to own this particular one, uh, take a look at the link in the description text below. That will take you to the Rock Island catalog page for this pistol. You can check out their pictures and their description, and if you're interested in it, you can place a bid right there online. It's actually a very simple process. So, thanks for watching.